So back to this part of the story. President Trump accusing John Kerry of breaking the law, violating what's known as the Logan Act by meeting with Iran's foreign minister multiple times. So let's bring in Fox News senior strategic analyst General Jack Keane for a lot of foreign policy tonight. Good to have you, General. Yeah, good to be here, Shannon. What do you make between the back and forth by these two? Because the president says, listen, he's operating at a disinterest to my administration. Uh, he admits he's doing it. Uh, a spokesperson for Kerry is saying the president has this all wrong. No, I, this is pretty outrageous behavior on the part of Secretary Kerry. We've got a new president. He was elected by the people. He's entitled to put in play his foreign policy. The Congress has oversight of it. Kerry disagrees with that foreign policy, and he's absolutely undermining it with a foreign government, not just a foreign government, but an adversary of the United States since 1980. They've been killing us steadily. It's pretty horrible behavior on his part. Well, and today, Secretary of State uh, Mike Pompeo said, we do not want war. That's not our message to Iran, but we will do what we have to do if you come after us or our interests. Uh, Senator Ben Sass, a Republican, said this, and I quote, that's for Grandma, I'm warning you, General Soleimani, he's the commander of the Quds Force, is an evil, quote, bastard, but he's not an idiot. He knows the U.S. military is able to bring his IRGC butchers to their knees if Americans are targeted. He should rethink his recent provocative moves. Where does this bubbling tension now go? Well, I, I, I agree with the senator, but I'm not sure he understands our history. The history is they blew up the, the U.S. Embassy in Lebanon, the Marine Barracks in Lebanon, the U.S. Embassy in Kuwait, the Air Force Barracks in, in Saudi Arabia. For four years, they targeted our soldiers by Iran, Iranian-trained Shia militia in Iraq, killed over 600 of them. So they have been about killing us for a long time. This is the first administration, Democratic or Republican, that has ever truly confronted the Iranians. And you can see what's happening. Their, their economy is being crippled by the sanctions. There's a significant amount of unrest. And they're trying to figure out what to do about this. And obviously, they're thinking of some kind of moves against U.S. soldiers. That'll be a significant mistake if they do it. I don't believe it would be anything that's comprehensive because that actually would bring the United States military to bear. Okay, so while that's playing out, we also have the hotspot happening with North Korea launching several of these missiles. Um, we've confirmed this morning, not exactly sure of the nature of them, but they've been more provocative in recent days with that. And also the seizure now of this ship by the U.S. that we say is violating international sanctions and getting away with all kinds of stuff they're not supposed to be doing. Um, an interesting quote from David Maxwell, a retired U.S. Army Special Forces colonel, now a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracy, is talking about the message of us taking this ship. He says, the bigger issue is the timing of this and the message it sends to Kim Jong-un that we can track your shipping and we can seize it under international law and so we can put even more pressure on you. We know Russia and China is involved with this, too. I mean, helping them evade the sanctions. So is this a deterrent? What happens now? Yeah, I, I've always believed that we should do more of this. I, I think we, would, we, we should have had a sort of a loose blockade with ships going into North Korea and out of, out of North Korea doing this very thing. Uh, that would take a little bit of an effort on our part to do that, but I, I clearly think it's worth it because for two reasons, and you mentioned it. Russia has never complied with the U.N. resolution to sanction the North Koreans, even though they voted for it. And they have been involved in transshipping oil through third parties to North Korea. And China has opened up the aperture on sanctions. In other words, North Korea is getting relief ever since the end of the first summit in Singapore. And I believe we should actually go after both of them and publicize it in terms of exactly what they're doing. Uh, one, because they're lying through the teeth about it. They're saying they're supporting the United States position, the U.N. position, but obviously they're not. All right, and quickly, I want to ask you about the president's comments today about his national security advisor, former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton, um, who people think is way more hawkish than the president. He said today, um, I temper him. He has strong views, but I like people with all kinds of different viewpoints, but I temper Bolton. There's only one person in charge of U.S. foreign policy, and that's, that's President Trump. I mean, I don't talk to the president on a regular basis like his advisor to, but I've had the opportunity to do it a couple of times, and he is definitely in charge. And the fact that he has advisors who may not all agree and may not always agree with him. I think that's healthy. I, I personally think that's good government. Yeah, I think any president would want that. They want honesty. All right, General, great to have you. Thanks yep. for coming in. Good talking to you, Shannon.